Hey everybody and welcome. In this video, we look at creating the visual projection effects from the FX TV series called Devs. We'll be doing it in After Effects and we are gonna use a plugin called Trap Code Form. If you have Adobe Suite and you have Trap Code Form and you're not using it, you need to look at it because it does some cool stuff. Today's tutorial is a little on the long side, but I'm gonna do my best to keep it as short and to the point as possible. But even keeping it simple, there's still a lot of steps. There's still a lot of steps. So on our Studio 2 Magic Extras page, I'll post a long version of this tutorial for anyone that wants to go a little more in depth. Okay. This effect is really just a glorified transition between two video clips. So first, we need to make or choose our two video clips. I prefer clips that have a lot of contrast for the effect. So like maybe a well-lit subject with a dark background. The bright and dark areas of the video drive how the particles will move in Z space whenever we displace them. You can use any video clip you want though, it'll work. It's just the more contrast, the more effect you'll get. All right, let's take a look at how to set this up. So to start off, we'll open our first clip into an After Effects composition. This will be our final composition when it's finished, so make sure it's long enough to have your first clip, the transition effect, and then your second clip. We'll rename the layer to original footage and then duplicate it. We go to the duplicated footage and pre-compose it and then we rename it to form driver. Then we go into that pre-composition and add a brightness and contrast effect. We brighten the clip and add some contrast to make the brights brighter and the darks darker. Then we return to our main composition and hide this layer because it doesn't have to be seen, it only has to drive the color and position of the form particles in trap code form. Now we create a new solid and call it form particles and add trap code form to this layer. We go into base form and change size to XYZ individual and size X to 1920 and size Y to 1080. If you're working in a different resolution, then make X and Y match your composition size. Next, set the particles in X to 450 and the particles in Y to 230 and the particles in Z to 1. Now we have a grid of dots across the entire footage. Next, we open the Particle Master dropdown. Set particle size to 1.2, set size random to 32, and set opacity random to 25. Now we open the Layer Maps Master dropdown and under Color and Alpha, we go to Layer and choose our Form Driver layer. Then we set the functionality to RGBA to RGBA and set Map Over to XY. Next we'll open the Displacement dropdown and set functionality to Individual XYZ, set Map Over to XY, and in Layer for Z, choose our Form Driver layer again. We also want to click invert in order to make the brighter particles move towards the camera. Now the strength setting will control how the particles are displaced in Z space. You can go back to your form driver pre-comp to adjust the brightness of your footage to adjust the color and position of the particles. Okay, now we'll pick a point in the timeline where we want the particles to begin displacing. We hit the stopwatch on strength and choose zero. Then we can move it about six seconds later and run the strength up to a number to where the particles are starting to pass the camera. Make any other adjustments you want as to how quickly the particles come out of the footage. Now we're going to open the drop down under disperse and twist and set disperse to three to get rid of the square pattern of the particles. Next, make your original footage fade out as the particles start to displace. And I also added a fast box blur that starts to blur the footage at the same time it's fading out. Then I set the blur dimension to horizontal. We also need to go to our form particles layer and have it fade in at the same time that the original footage is fading out. Now, create a new camera and accept the 28 millimeter default setting. Then open the camera options and turn the depth of field on and set focal distance to 60. Then go to the beginning of the particle effect before it has displaced much and set the focal distance to where the particles are as in focus as possible. Now when they displace, the particles will come towards the camera and go out of focus. You can play with these camera settings until you get a look that you like. When we finish with that, we go to the timeline where the particles start to displace and open the transform settings under the camera and click all of the stopwatches. Then we can go about five seconds into the timeline and click the camera tool and set up some camera movements. Maybe move to the side a little bit or forward or back some, 
but then go to the Z rotation and turn it some. It really adds to the 3D movement of the camera. After we have the camera moving how we like, we want to create another solid, and this time we'll name it Background Particles. This will just be a layer of some particles swimming around to fill in the black areas a little bit. I was debating on whether or not to show the settings that we use in this layer, but some people may want it, so I'm gonna go through it very quickly. But I'll give you a four second break right now just to let our minds rest. Okay, let's drop trap code particular onto the background particles layer. And let's place this layer below our form particles. Now, go to the emitter master dropdown and change particles per second to 5000. Change emitter type to box. Change direction to directional. Set X rotation to negative 22. Set viscosity to zero. And emitter size to XYZ individual. Now, set emitter size X and Y to larger than your comp size. Since the camera is moving around, you want to have this layer big enough to still be seen. I set X at 2500 and Y to 2200. Now we can go into Particle Master and change Life to 4, change Size to 1, and Size Random to 100. Then we change Opacity over Life to where the particles will fade in and out. Then on Color, choose whatever color you like. We used a light blue and then set Color Random to 41 just to give a little variety. Then we set the Blend Mode to Add. Now we open the physics master and change the physics model to fluid. Then click the fluid drop down and change apply force to at start. We change force relative position X to 247 and leave Y and Z at zero. Now change force region size to 1500. Buoyancy, it always sounds funny when I say that, buoyancy. Buoyancy, change buoyancy to zero. Random swirl XYZ to five swirl scale to three, and change visualize relative density to opacity. Now we open the global fluid controls and we just need to set fluid time factor to two and viscosity to 10. Now just fade in this layer of particles at the same time that the other particles are fading in and that's about it for the particles layer. And as a reminder, if you want the longer, slower version of this video, it's here and in the links below. Okay, now we can work on our second clip. We open it in a new composition. We're going to basically do everything we just did again, but this time we can copy and paste some of our work. In our first clip, the image breaks down into the particles. In the second clip, the particles come together to form the image, so it needs to be in reverse. So we take our layer and right click it and choose time and time reverse layer. Now the clip will play in reverse. Rename the layer to original footage two and duplicate it like we did before. We need to take the duplicated footage and pre-compose it and open the pre-comp and add the brightness and contrast effect. And again, make the brights brighter and the darks darker. Now we can go back to our second comp and hide the pre-comp layer and rename it to Form Driver 2. We then go to our first comp and select the camera, form particles and background particles and copy them. We return to our second comp and paste them in. Now open the form particles effects and open the layer maps master drop down and then look under color and alpha at layer and select form driver two. Then under displacement in layer for Z also set it to form driver two. Next, we need to make the original footage two layer fade out with the opacity stopwatch when the particles begin to move. And add the fast box blur again to make it blur horizontally as it fades also using the stopwatch like before. Now if we watch this footage, the particles will displace off of the image just like in the first comp. So then we select all of our layers in this second composition and select pre-compose and move all attributes to the new composition and click OK. Then select our pre-comp and copy it. Then paste it into our first composition. Make sure that the new comp layer is at the top and right click it and choose time and then time reverse layer. Now, all the particles will be coming together to form the second image. Next, just set up when you want the top layer to fade in. I suggest making it a three to five second fade in so you don't really notice it. Move this top layer around in the timeline until you like the way it fades in, and then you have the basics of this transition done. I added an adjustment layer to the top of all this and added a little turbulent displacement. 
I turned up the amount and evolution while the particles were moving and then turned them back down to zero when it was finished. I also created another adjustment layer to have the video desaturate some while the particles were flying around and then return to normal saturation when the second image finishes forming. From this point, you can continue to play with the settings to get a lot of varieties of the effect. Go to the particles layer and mess with the size and the amount of particles and look under Fluid Master. Turning on fluid motion and playing with those settings can give some really interesting results. And doing this transition between photos is pretty cool too. I'd love to see what you guys come up with, so if you want to leave a link in the comments below, that'd be great. But that's it for today's video. I hope it gave you some good ideas and maybe some new things to try with Trap Code Form.